Martin. It's nice to have you on the show, Money and Markets. Now, I know recently you were part of, uh, you know, the survey that targeted the small, micro, and uh, generally informal operators in business. And uh, this survey was, um, you know, in uh, northern Uganda, in the Gulu area. For starters, what are some of the things that intrigued you? What are the pointers, the take-homes that you picked from that survey? Well, this was an uh, ecosystem mapping initiative and uh, there were a number of partners, so they basically scoped the landscape. And not just the SMEs, um, not just the SMEs, but also the support network that, that, um, that, is, able to, um, that is able to encourage them to grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a couple of findings. One, it was found that the number of support institutions already in the market, there are good BDS providers, the financial service okay. providers, um, government is there and has set up a number of institutions, including the directorate for SMEs. Mm -hmm. So those exist. Mm -hmm. However, they also identified certain weaknesses that still exist. One, they found that many businesses are still informal. Second, they found that many businesses still lack the entrepreneurial management skills that are necessary for them to thrive. Mm -hmm. Third, they found that the financial infrastructure is still weak. Mm -hmm. SMEs are not accessing the money that they need. And then finally, you have a, a policy environment that is not, well, it's good, there are laws and policies, but they are not necessarily supportive. Okay. The, the, the reason why this survey is important is because it looks at the entrepreneur within the context of the ecosystem. You cannot survive on your own. Now, when we talk about these, um, you know, uh, support structures, of course, we all appreciate that entrepreneurs cannot exist on their own. They need those support structures. Yeah. No. Um, from where you sit, um, what are some of these structures and why aren't they delivering you know the intended uh, purpose for which we expect them to there's definitely a, a range of gaps and that's why the sector is struggling yeah so for instance if you look at bds providers there's there's no quality assurance mechanism everyone decides what kind of bds to offer there is no network that brings them together so it means that for the client they don't know what kind of service to expect from the service providers that's a weakness and then if you look at aspects of finance, you find that you, 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 you have limited financing options, particularly for startups. That, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And then you also have a lot of, you, you have finance that is available, but is extremely expensive. How can this be brought down? So the, the range of weaknesses that still exist. And I think this is phase, I mean, according to the, what we are told, this is phase one. They intend to develop a program to address these issues in, a, in, in using the ecosystem up. Okay. Now, one of the things that we see coming out here is the continued informality of operations by small and medium enterprises um, and the micro enterprises for that matter. Why do businesses continue to stay informal despite, of course, you know, the good things that are promised, like the one-stop center by government, and of course, you know, uh, the promises that come with uh, formalizing operations. Why do they stay informal? From the business person's perspective, they do things purposefully. If you tell them register, they'll ask why. There must be an incentive. You should say, because if you say, oh, please register so that you can access a loan, they'll ask what is the interest rate? If the interest rate is 30%, 25%, they'll say, you know what, I'm happy borrowing informally from my friends, selling my goods, selling my car, and running my business. So I think we must yes. sit down and create a proper incentive okay. structure. People assume that being formalized, it's as if it's gospel truth. You must formalize. Why? Let's make sure we provide carrots to say, oh, if you formalize, you'll have access to this. If you formalize, you'll have access to this. If you're, if you're a sole proprietorship, this is the advantage. If you're a limited liability company, this is the advantage. But if SMEs cannot get government contracts in spite of formalization, then you're not creating the necessary incentives for them, for them to formalize. Okay. Now, talking about government, of course, we keep talking about uh, uh, the role that government can play in really freeing the potential that most of these players in this segment have. Let's talk policy. In spe specific terms, what kind of policies would you want to see uh, government put in place in order to lift the micro and small entrepreneurs in this economy? Government is the largest consumer in this country. The only problem that government does not pay 
So first of all, if government is picking goods and services from SMEs, let them pay. In Kenya, they have put a deadline. Within 90 days, I, I don't know the exact time, but within a certain period, every government entity should have paid SMEs. But here, you know, we are, you, you find that SMEs are now sponsoring the government. Because they are lending government money and government is taking two years, you know. So, SMEs are choosing not to do business with government, which is sad. Because it means that we are taking away jobs. Every time you support an SME, you're creating local jobs. So government should start, create a policy and start paying as soon as possible. Secondly, give SMEs contracts in a very transparent way. Have a very transparent system. I know PPDA has set up a portal now where people can track, you know, what contracts are available and so on and so forth. Let, let us not stop there. Let's make sure that we follow the spirit of these changes. If I apply, I'm a nobody, but I can deliver the service, and you say I can deliver, give me a chance. So I think that's uh, very important. And then, let's support young entrepreneurs to grow. Let's have the right policies. Because you see, for, for instance, in this very meeting we're talking with URA, URA is saying, we shall tax you when you make profits. No, don't wait for them to make profits. Support them to reach that stage, and then start picking from that one. Don't say, oh, don't come to us until you have made profits. Oh, we shall look for you when you have made profits. You they are trying. Nurture. You should nurture. Mm. You should nurture. No, no, we are not saying you are a directly should do this, but government yes. should try to nurture businesses so that by the time they are going to them for taxes, they've made the contribution. Then businesses will be eager to pay because they'll know, you know what? Government has supported me. It is my duty to give back. I hear you. Yeah. Thank you very much, John. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me around. Anytime, Sean. Yeah.